This country is home to ancient pyramids, particularly in the region of Meroe. Hello, welcome to Open Tierra. Today we are looking at Sudan, a country steeped in rich history, diverse cultures, and breathtaking landscapes. Join us and stay to the end to discover its history and traditions dating back thousands of years. Sudan is the third largest country in Africa, located in Northeast Africa along the Red Sea. It is located in Northeast Africa, bordered by Egypt to the north, the Red Sea to the northeast, Eritrea and Ethiopia to the east, South Sudan to the south, the Central African Republic to the southwest, Chad to the west, and Libya to the northwest. The country covers 1,886,068 square kilometers, or 728,214 square miles, and is divided into 18 states. The major regions include the Nubian Desert, the Central Clay Plains, the Jabal Mara Volcanic Region, and the East African Savanna in the south. The Blue and White Nile rivers meet in Khartoum and flow north through the desert until reaching Egypt and emptying into the Mediterranean Sea. The fertile Nile River Valley runs through the center of Sudan from south to north. The valley averages between 15 and 25 miles wide, allowing for agriculture along the river banks. However, beyond this fertile area is the Nubian Desert, which covers most of northern Sudan and is part of the larger Sahara Desert. Sandstorms are common in the desert region. Eastern Sudan consists of plains and plateaus, with some mountain ranges, such as the Imatong Mountains, along the border with Uganda and Kenya. The Red Sea Hills are located along the Red Sea coast. The Jebel Mara is a dormant volcano in the Darfur region of western Sudan. The mountain rises to a height of 10,131 feet. Sudan is home to a diverse population, consisting of numerous ethnic, religious, and linguistic groups. Africa's largest country by land area, Sudan's cultural diversity reflects its geographic variety. Let's explore the key details about the Sudanese people. Sudan's population of over 40 million is made up of hundreds of ethnic groups. The main groups are Arab and Black African. The Northern and Central Arab groups include Bedouin Arab tribes as well as Nubian, Coptic, and Beja peoples. Southern groups like the Dinka, Nuer, and Shaluk are predominantly of Black African origin. Most Sudanese are Sunni Muslims, estimated at around 90% of the population. The remaining are Christians and followers of traditional indigenous beliefs. Islam is the dominant religion in the north, while the south has more religious diversity with a larger Christian minority. Religious differences fueled historic conflicts. Many languages are spoken in Sudan, reflecting its ethnic diversity. Arabic is the most widely spoken and official language used in schools and government. However, over 100 local languages come from the various African and Nilo-Saharan language families. Sudan's cuisine is influenced by its diverse cultures and geographic regions. Traditional meals utilize local ingredients like beans, meat, vegetables, and grains. Let's explore some highlights of Sudanese food, full madams. A popular breakfast dish made with fava beans cooked with oil or butter, often served with eggs, cheese, vegetables, and cob's bread. A staple meal across Sudan, mullah stew, and kisra. This meat stew features lamb or beef with vegetables like tomatoes, okra, and pumpkin. It is served with kisra, a thin fermented bread made from sorghum or wheat flour, a quintessential Sudanese dish, tamaya. These chickpea fritters are made from a batter using flour and spices, then deep fried, often served as a snack or appetizer with hot sauce, tahini sauce, or yogurt dip, a vegan-friendly option, a saida, a thick porridge made from wheat or sorghum flour cooked with water and butter or oil, 
Sometimes it contains nuts or raisins. Often eaten at breakfast or as a side dish. Provides energy for daily tasks. Sudan has a long and rich history with ancient civilizations, powerful empires, and colonial influence. Sudan was home to some of the earliest human settlements, and its strategic location helped it develop unique cultures and identities. Some of the earliest evidence of human settlement in Sudan dates back over 60,000 years to the Paleolithic period. By the third millennium BCE, societies had developed farming, cattle herding, and basic political administration. From the first millennium BCE to fourth century CE, successive powerful kingdoms such as Kush, Meroe, and Nobatia emerged along the Nile River Valley. They built pyramids, adopted Egyptian hieroglyphs, and developed iron tools and weapons. From the seventh to 13th centuries CE, Christian kingdoms competed for control of Northern Sudan until the introduction of Islam after Arab invasions. From the 14th to 16th centuries, Arab Bedouin tribes migrated into Sudan and eventually gained control of the region, spreading Islam more widely. The Funj Sultanate and Fur Sultanate became prominent regional powers. In 1820, Egypt invaded Sudan, beginning the Turkiya period of Egyptian colonial rule. This led to economic exploitation and slave trading. In the 1880s, a religious leader named Muhammad Ahmad proclaimed himself the Mahdi, an Islamic messianic figure, and led the Mahdi revolt to free Sudan from Egyptian rule. His successors established the Mahdi state until 1898, when Anglo-Egyptian forces retook control. From 1899 to 1956, Sudan was administered as Anglo-Egyptian Sudan, a combination of British and Egyptian rule. The British imposed policies favoring Christian missionaries and restricting Arab and Islamic influences. This created resentment and contributed to later conflicts. Sudan gained independence in 1956. Sudan faced significant political instability and civil wars following independence. Conflicts included the First Sudanese Civil War from 1955 to 1972 and the Second Sudanese Civil War from 1983 to 2005 between the North and South. This led to South Sudan's independence in 2011. Sudan continues to experience instability and economic challenges today. Sudan's economy is rooted in agriculture and livestock with most of the population making their living as farmers and herders. During the 20th century, Sudan underwent colonization, which brought some manufacturing and modernization of agriculture with large cotton and grain schemes. After independence in 1956, Sudan's economy grew, but various coups and civil wars led to setbacks. In 1999, oil was discovered in Sudan, which drove rapid GDP growth for over a decade. However, the secession of South Sudan in 2011 deprived Sudan of most of its oil reserves. This shock led to economic contraction and uncertainty. While new gold mining and other activities emerged, it did not fully replace lost oil revenues. China has become Sudan's largest trading partner, importing significant amounts of oil and providing machinery manufactured goods and construction services. Saudi Arabia, India, and Egypt are also major trade partners. However, decades of U.S. sanctions isolated Sudan from broader global trade and investment. Despite glimpses of growth, Sudan's economy has been plagued by corruption, mismanagement, heavy foreign debt, inflation, and high unemployment. Basic infrastructure is inadequate. Poverty remains widespread, especially in conflict-ridden regions. Political instability continues hampering economic planning and development. Today, its GDP sits at $34 billion, down from $129 billion in 2017. From ancient rock art to modern painters, Sudanese visual arts evolved yet retain connections to the past. 
The Kingdom of Kush built over 200 pyramids as tombs for royalty and nobility. The pyramids contained painted murals depicting the rulers and their families, gods, and religious rituals. Mero, the capital of Kush, contains several large pyramid complexes. After Islam spread in Sudan, artistic styles shifted. Calligraphy and geometric designs were used to decorate mosques in keeping with Muslim teachings on figural images, as seen in the Grand Mosque of Sennar from the 16th century. Luxury crafts like leatherwork and metal engraving were also practiced. This art expressed religious devotion. Under Anglo-Egyptian rule in the 19th century, new forms emerged influenced by the British presence. Portraiture, wood carving, and ivory work catered to foreign officials and missionaries with imagery combining African, Arab, and Western elements, as exemplified by the painter Osman Wakiala. In the 20th century, artists like Suleiman Mansour fused indigenous forms with modernist styles, as shown in his Camel of Burdens painting. Today, Sudanese artists integrate folklore, political issues, and personal influences in varied media from painting to sculpture. If you enjoyed this video on Sudan, You'll love this next one.